What's up guys and welcome, a very formal welcome, to Let's Play Dark Souls 3 Kita Edition. We're gonna jump right back into it because as you can see, Cirrus, the lovely Lady Cirrus is back. Let's go ahead and have a chat with her, shall we? Hello again. I have since heard a great deal about you. For one, that you are most gentle of heart. True. I too am bound by duty but can offer you my sign. I hear that cordial intrusion lays the path to embers. If I can be of help, by all means, do call upon me. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. And now we got the Dark Moon loyalty gesture as she is part of the Dark Moon Covenant. If you should require assistance, use my sign. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. Now this gesture is actually pretty important to get, this Dark Moon loyalty gesture. Uh, one, it leads back, it's another thing for Dark Moon Gwendolyn. Uh, that's what it is referencing. But it actually unlocks a certain thing, which we'll find out later in the game. And you have to do this thing with Cirrus in order to get it. Now, in order to get Cirrus to appear, the reason that she came now is because I gave the Dream Chaser's ashes to... Uh, the Shrine Handmaiden over here. I think it's a little confusing about that, which is why I wanted to point it out. It took me a while to figure out that that was the trigger to cause her to come. For her to say that she's cool with you and she thinks you're good, it has to do with a covenant that we haven't found yet. As long as you haven't joined and actively contributed to that covenant, you'll be okay. We haven't found it yet, so uh, I don't want to spoil anything. But we're going to go ahead and head back to... Fair and keep, and I'm gonna finish out fair and keep, and then before I face the big boss of the area, then I'll go ahead and go back and head uh, the other direction that we missed. Because I figured, you know what, we went to fair and keep, might as well just figure it out now that we got the dialogue I wanted. So I'll see you guys there. So we're here back at fair and keep. There's actually something I missed pointing out last time, which I'll point out. As we go to this new area, uh, I should actually have some clips I can cut in real quick to show them, or I'll force myself to in post. I'm going to hate myself in post for making myself do this, but that's all right. It's for you guys. I do it for you. There actually is an area I missed, as you pointed out to me. A bunch of you pointed out to me last time. Not an area I missed, but an item that I missed that's pretty important to get that I would like to get. But um, I'll do it a little bit later in the episode. I'm sure some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you don't, well, you'll find out, I suppose. Now, you can either go around this building to the left, which is exactly where I went last time, or we can go to the right of this big giant building right in front of us, uh, that tower, which I believe is actually part of the uh, Lothric Bridge. So, we're going to go ahead and go this direction, and this is going to lead us to the final flame that I've missed, th and I think we looked down on last episode as well. Also, let's go ahead and get a goodie while we're at it. The Nameless Night Set. That's pretty sick. I actually think I missed this sometimes in my own playthrough, so... I'm gonna have to remember that that's where you get the Nameless Night Set. I'm not sure if there's actually anything lore-wise to it, but... Uh, let's see. Crafted with thin metal, greatly reinforced by a groove finish. So, no. Uh, I do also want to apologize for how long it's taken for those of you who are watching these episodes as I upload them. For me to get this episode out is because I was trying to make that Aldrich lore video that I just put out. And it's a case of, unfortunately, uh, just with the way my schedule has been, I didn't have time to uh, really get any footage at all until basically just now, uh, this past week. And I was like, you know what, I want to start making lore videos. I just need to... St I just need to start. Uh, getting footage in general, so I'll, I'll go. There was actually a different lore video I was gonna try to make for this week, and I'll do it for next week, which is uh, mainly because I like Aldrich a lot, and I was trying to see if I could get Aldrich done this week, and I liked what I wrote for him. So it's kind of a combination of like, oh, I thought I, I liked what I wrote, so I wanted to get it out, and I just happen to like that character a lot. But the other character I was going to make, I'll do for next week, and at this point, I pretty much have all the footage I need. So I won't have to take time off from making let the Let's Play, hopefully. I'm actually helping out with a charity related to Souls next week. Uh, next weekend, so it kind of actually depends on how much preparation I have to do for that charity. But I'm going to do the best I can to try and keep on pumping out these Let's Plays and making lore videos. It's just hard now that I have both that I have a full-time job. The last time I did this stuff, I didn't. 
uh, have the full-time job when I was during Bloodborne, so I was able to do both things at once. And then still people thought I was uploading too slow for my, uh... Oh, wow, I actually got really lucky there. It's just those skulls that he summons that really start to destroy me, because there's just so much coming at you. I'm kind of like, with this specific enemy, sometimes I do pretty good against him, and sometimes I just get completely trounced by him, and apparently today is a trounced day. He's absolutely trouncing all over me. Well, I uh, defeated this one, so we're at the final flame here. And the thing I wanted to point out that I missed last time, and I actually only saw because some of you guys pointed out to me, so... This is why I love doing these Let's Plays. It's just that shared knowledge, and I love reading your guys' comments because you, you really point out a lot of awesome stuff to me. All these flames that we put out have over them different bosses from Dark Souls 1 related to the first flame. So this is the Four Kings, and the Four Kings is one of the lords you had to beat in Dark Souls 1 in order to kindle uh, the Lord Vessel, or I, I should say fill the Lord Vessel. So uh, this is what I was going to edit with the footage from last time. So... Here I am in post right now, showing you uh, another one. This is Nito now that you're seeing here. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Even though I'm recording this as I'm still staring at the Four Kings. And then here you can see the Witch of Izalith. So the only one that's missing of the set is Seath. But I guess it's because he didn't truly have a Lord Soul. He had it as a gift from Gwyn. Then again, same with the Four Kings. The Four Kings Lord Soul was a gift from Gwyn, so, I mean, you know. So let's go ahead and snuff out that flame. And thus, we open the passage into Farron Keep, deeper into Farron Keep, where the Abyss Watchers supposedly lay. Let me go ahead and get some Homeward Bones and head up this path. And I'll say the other reason that I was kind of uh, delaying on recording is because I got a really bad canker sore this week, so it, hurts, it hurt to talk. It's still kind of here a little bit. I'm trying to do my best to talk. I recorded my lore video uh, recently, my most recent lore video, and it's... If, I don't think anyone's commented that I sound off, but if I do sound at all off, it's because uh, I couldn't. It was harder for me to emote the way I wanted to because my canker sore was hurting. A canker sore, for those who are wondering, is just kind of a condition that a lot of people get if they're born with it. I guess it's not like anything serious. It's not a cold sore. They are two completely different things. People are curious. Cold sores and canker sores are very, very different. Uh, they are both like sores that are in your mouth, but canker sores are not contagious. They just are. I don't know, some people are just more, more prone to them than others. I happen to be pretty prone to them, so there you go. <laughs> Figured might as well explain, because I know some people probably think when I say it that I'm, I'm talking about something else that it isn't. So uh, Before we head into Farron Keep and deeper in, first we're going to get some sweet-ass Estes soup. But the other thing I'm going to do, uh, just for my sake, is I'm going to go ahead and... I'll first heal up at a bonfire, but then beyond that, I could go up there, not going to. Uh, beyond that, we're actually going to go around this building and get the finish up the rest of this part of Farron Keep that I missed last time. Oh, here we go. I always have a... I don't know why. I still get lost and confused. I was mentioning that last episode when I'm in Farron Keep. Every other area, I'll be completely fine. Won't have these issues, but man, Farron Keep just throws me for a loop sometimes. And I... You know, it's. I think it's because it's such an open area. And I talked about this last time. But it's such an open area. There's so many different ways you can go. Uh, and the landmarks all look very similar for the most part. Alright, so drop down here. Mainly because I saw this that I missed. Not that I really need Titanite Shards, but that's alright. And what we're going to do is wrap around this way. So... If we go to the left here, oh look, see more items I missed. Oh no, actually this is the way I really wanted to go. All right, cool. 
Yeah, so uh, we're gonna deal with my friend. First, we're gonna deal with the demons, actually, because they're not too big of a deal. Get these guys knocked out of the way. So we can deal with our true friend, friend here, the crab, and this one I'm actually going to want to beat. All right, but I wanna go somewhere where I'm not in deep water. Come on, crab, come on, come on. Fight me where I wanna fight you, please. Cool. I am not good at fighting these things, so this is kind of just like a Hail Mary for me. I'm like, hey, I got, I, I want to get him. I want to get it for you guys. I th think the best thing to do if you can is try to get it to, oh god. Try to get it not to eat you and, and clamp you like this. Obviously. Now, I saw him foaming at the, mar bubbling at the mouth, and to me that's like the best attack to just like, try and like, get him to, uh, yeah, to try and lure him into. I think just if you're at the front, he's pretty likely to do that. So, stand at the front, you might lure him into this bubble attack, and that bubble attack is pretty easy to take care of. And then you can get a visceral on him! Eat that crab, gonna have some crab soup now. You get a lingering dragon crust ring from this one, which is why I wanted to kill it, because I knew it had a drop. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lingering dragon crust ring. A special ring given to those who are deemed fit to undertake the journey of discovery in Vinheim Home Sorcery. A, pro a propus to the Dragon School, the seal depicts an everlasting dragon. A lingering dragon symbolizes the true nature of the consummate sorcerer. Honestly, I'm not... Well, I guess I was going to say I'm not sure exactly why Vin a Vinheim ring would be here. I don't think there's too much connection outside of the sake of... If we're getting all this stuff from Ulusil, which is also known from sorcery, or for sorcery... Uh, we know Seath had an interest in Ulysseel in Dark Souls 1. If you, at least I believe he did from my Dark Souls 1 lore video. And I talk a lot about, a lot about why in my Dark Souls 1 lore video on Seath. I believe that. I have a pretty strong belief. But we're getting another one of these pale trees, uh, these white birch trees that we've seen a lot of spears getting tossed at before. This time no spears. However, we're gonna find a young white branch and a crown of dusk. And another uh, branch, but let's look at that crown of dusk. That's really what I want to look at. Feathered crown bestowed upon the princess of Ulysseel, land of ancient golden sorceries. Through the guardian Elizabeth's blessing, this raises the power and effect of the wearer's magic, but damage suffered by magic attacks rises in tandem. The main thing is that this is an item of dusk of Ulysseel, yet another connection to Ulysseel here in Farron Keep. A at this point, I think I can I I'd say it's 100% confirmed that this is... Ulysseel slash Darkroot Basin slash Darkroot Garden in the future. Uh, that's what Farron Keep is. I, in my mind, there's absolutely no way to argue that it's not. So, uh, good job. Try to convince me otherwise, but I won't take it. Especially now that we're seeing all these mushrooms here, which again is a Darkroot Basin thing. Look, I know you see them in the uh, Great Hollow on the way to Ash Lake as well, but look, look. Look at me, I'm getting hurt a lot, and I don't want to die. Look at that. I mean, even though it's a good thing if I die. Did I mention that? You know, it's a, it's actually, whenever I die, it's on purpose, you know? Totally on purpose. Oh, wow, I did not even realize I uh, was going to accidentally fall off of this roll, but I will take it. So I know I was here before. I know I went to this area. I realize that, but... Uh, main reason I'm coming back here, though, other than getting the stuff from the crab... And getting the Dusk of Ulysseel stuff is because I want to go ahead and try to get this item. <sighs> that's about how I feel about it. Basically, that, that's how I feel about trying to get this item. Alright, let's try and use locations to my advantage. Oh, whoops, I meant to dodge, and I did not. Oh, well. Oh, dodge, 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 dodge. Dodge. E. E. Oh. <laughs> get out of his way. You know what I was actually going to do was try to just, uh... I was going to just run and get the item and then run away. But, hey, you know, since I lured one of them out, I was like, alright, might as well try to do this the right way. I didn't notice what the first item I got from him was, though. Uh, oh, no, nope, nope. Oh, wait, alright, uh, too late. Since I'd only, uh, pissed off one of them, I was like, alright, might as well just try to deal with one at a time. But now I've pissed off them both, so, you know. No reason to do that anymore. Let's go ahead and get the item and get the hell out of here. I think this calls for some Diddy Kong Racing music, if you ask me. We get a poison gem. 
That's what that was all for. Now we can make some poisoned uh, items. And slash this guy in the face on the way back. Now, I think you guys should remember last episode, I was at that other area over there. That arch. Uh, I think this bridge is actually... Wait. Am I lost again? No. Alright, I see what it is. I get where that bridge was now. Alright, so... That actually wraps up everything I want to get in this part of the Fern Keep. So, what I can now do is go ahead and heal up at a bonfire again. And then go ahead and move forward in Fern Keep. There is one item I missed. I know, once you know exactly what it is and what I'm talking about, we will get it... Uh, we'll get it soon. There's kind of a, a shortcut-ish thing that goes to it, and I figure might as well do the wraparound way. Might as well do the wraparound. I guess something I can talk about as I'm going over there, as you many of you noticed that I try to talk a bunch during my Let's Plays. Some people find it annoying that I talk the whole time. Some people like it. Uh, for me, I feel like if I'm watching a Let's Play, I almost think of it like a podcast in a sense. That's how I... Let's Plays I like to watch. Usually I'll watch Let's Plays while I'm doing other things or right before I'm going to bed. But a lot of times it's sort of like a podcast. So I'll have it on in the background while I'm doing other things. And as such, the type of podcasts I tend to, or Let's Plays I tend to like are ones where the Let's Player is talking the entire time. I think to me that's the entire point of a Let's Play is I want to hear someone talking the whole time. Otherwise, I would just watch a long play. And a long play is when people do the... Uh, you know, they just play a game and they don't talk at all. That's what a long play is. So, to me, that's why I watch a Let's Play. That's why I do the style of Let's Plays I do. If people don't like it, that's fine. You know, I don't have to watch the style. But I'm assuming if you're still watching at this point and this far into it, you do like that. That's not even what I was going to talk about. It's funny. It just led to me saying this. Because since I wanted to have a subject to talk about, I was going to talk about my lore video that I made. And mainly that I accidentally edited out a line of my video that I really wish I kept in, that there's a speculation I was talking about that I didn't really fully believe in. I just wanted to point it out in my new lore video and point out like, hey, this is a speculation. Here's why there's these cool things that relate to it, and you can kind of take it for whatever you think. Although I don't think there's any really hard evidence. And I took out that line of me saying that there's no hard evidence, in my opinion. And now everyone's telling me about how they feel like I'm wrong, which, you know, it's you're free to do. That's the point, is to have a discussion, but I'm just, like, mad at myself. Like, man, why did I leave out that line? That's totally what I thought. I just... I left out the line, and now everyone thinks I'm an idiot. Eh. The joys. The joys of, uh... not being able to edit videos after you're done on YouTube. Like, someone, like, f figured something out that I was actually questioning on the channel, or on the channel, on the, the video, and I wish I could just put it in the the let's or the the video is like okay we figured it out someone figured it out i'm gonna i'll give them credit and this is the answer but i'd have to take down the video re-edit it recreate it and then re-upload like a new upload if i wanted to do something like that which it's just not a good idea to do on youtube which really sucks all right so you can see those guys dying over there that's these dark knights are going and murdering them also over there straight ahead that is how you get to the boss uh, since I haven't finished hollowing out yet, I don't want to go to him. So that boss over there, if you defeat that boss that's in that area, Yol, Yol of Londor will die. Uh, no matter what. Yoel of Londor will die, and it will completely stop you from being able to do the other quest that revolves around Yoel of Londor by completely hollowing out, which is the quest that I want to go for, the ending I want to get this time. So uh, I am not going to do that. Not going to go fight him. Fortunately, there's another area we can go to. Now, I could just die a bunch, and that would, you know, solve the problem, and then just fully hollow out. But I figure, you know, there's another area for me to go to, and that way I can keep on this thing, where uh, if I die, it actually feels like, as opposed to a hindrance, I'm like, wow, I'm actually making progress. This is great. Good thing I died. It actually makes it more fun. This is like, cool. Uh, I'll still try not to die, and I'll see how much I, I can do. But it doesn't feel like a horrible thing if I do die. We had another crystal lizard up here. I don't really think there's any lore to the crystal lizards, really. These giant ones, I think they're more just conveniently placed, I, I think, as a mob enemy. I guess not a mob enemy when you're fighting these. That's not the right word, but... You know, just an enemy to place to 
cause interest. Couple Titanite scales. And what we're going to do by doing that, we get great magic weapon, which I doubt there's any real lore to. Nope, no lore, no real lore. But if we open this gate, this is the gate that we saw a couple episodes ago at the Road of Sacrifice by the uh, giant crabs, by that black knight who's over there. I am stuck on something. Do you like how much I dodged that while I was just trying to get away from him? That was actually pretty great. Anyways, uh, right up there is the Black Knight. To the right here is where you can see the top of Farron Keep. And this is where we got, um, forgetting the name of the armor. Let's see. Not Northern. The Deserter armor. So the Deserter set was up here. So yeah, that's where the deserter set is. This is a shortcut that we've now opened up that you're probably never going to use. I've seen people complain about pointless shortcuts in this game, and I actually don't totally disagree with them. I think that there are a couple kind of pointless shortcuts, and you know this would be one of them. However, there is another drop here, and this is the drop that I was waiting for before I went to get that other item that people were pointing were pointing out to me that I missed, uh, which is this drop down the Farron Keep. Now. The reason I did it was because I was like, might as well just hit two birds with one stone. So by going down here, we can get Atonement. And Atonement being a miracle given to those cast out from the Sable Church of Londor. This is the only tale known by the exiles who believe it carries a word of forgiveness. Cursed journeys, too, must ultimately come to an end. I think Londor is actually one of the most interesting lore areas in Dark Souls 3. It has a lot to do with the main story of the game, especially the story that we're going for and the ending that we're going for right now by hollowing out. This is going to be hollowing out as Yoel, who we're dealing with, Yoel of Londor. Hollowing out is going to be the Londor quest, essentially. And uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but we'll talk more about it once we you know, continue the quest. But here I'm going to get a hollow gem, and then we drop down into this area that has all of our favorite lizards so yep this is uh this is what i was waiting for and right here right below me is the cave uh oh my god all right okay okay i was trying to see if there's any like good way to get down here but uh nope i i just had to wake everyone up you know it's like hey good morning can't wait to get uh cursed which actually, you know, funny thing about it is, other than the fact that I would die right away, it's actually not that bad, because it was just hollowing me out more. But this is the cave I was trying to go for anyways, so... You know, progress while well, not making progress. The... Harsh progress, I suppose, would be the word for it. Wow, that is a disgusting-looking cave. Lots of, lots of bad stuff in there. All right, cool. This is all dealt with. So, I somehow managed to miss this treasure chest. And it's funny, because I was thinking to myself, like, man, I feel like I missed something in this cave in the back of my head. But since I was kind of in a rush in my mind, I was just like, all right, I just want to get in and get out and finish this area. So, we get the antiquated set, which is also related to Dusk of Ulysil. So, again, further cementing uh, that this is Ulysil. So, a dress sewn in a long-lost fashion, elaborately embroidered ivory-colored silk is imbued with ancient magic power. No protection is offered by this garment, as it was never intended for battle. You would have to play Dark Souls 1 to know that this is Ulysseal. If you haven't played Dark Souls 1, you just would not know. So this is something that only people in the know know. Yet another thing right here, another little Easter egg, is that this, you can tell by the eyes right there that are sort of there, this is Elizabeth from Dark Souls 1, who is in the Ulysseal. This is from the Dark Souls 1 DLC, Artorius of the Abyss. So, that is the other thing I missed that I want to point out. Once again, further cementing that this is Dark Souls 1. So, I will talk to you guys in a moment as we head to a new location. Actually, it looks like I can level up a bit, so I might as well do that. Let's put, uh, let's see. Let's put one in Dex. And let's go another with Vigor. It's funny, I never was too big on raising up my health in Dark Souls 1, but for this game... I'm like, you know what? Might as well. Why not? Alright, so being that we've unlocked Farron Keep, we're gonna might as well just start the Farron Keep bonfire, because this is going to be a quicker way to get to where I'm going. Um, and before I forget, let's look at the poison gem. A gem of infused titanite discovered in the rotted forest of Farron. 
used to infusion used in infusion to create poison weapons. Such weapons inflict poison laced damage that gradually eats away at foes. So that is what we got, uh, which makes sense that we found it in poison. Of course. Other reason I want to come from this side is actually my favorite set is going to be over here. Or actually, not, not necessarily my favorite set, but one of my favorite sets. So I can actually uh, finish out wearing a set that I really like, which is right over there. I basically just missed it, so... Whoops, my bad. The Fallen Knight set, which I absolutely love the way it looks. Although I always keep my ragged mask, because gotta have that ragged mask. So, armor of an order of fallen knights who dis disbanded and fled, but met untimely deaths. The drab, tattered cloth conceals tough black metal, which provides dependable protection from fire. It is just possible to make out the majestic gold engravings on its surface. And I, actually, I'm fine with leaving the knight set on other than that, but I really like the way this looks, especially with the ragged mask. So, one of my favorite sets. I actually just had the uh, fortune to uh, make an appearance, a guest appearance in Kid Icarus's latest video. Here we are, we gotta drop down. So, uh, and I gave him a bunch of footage, which he mentions, so that's why I feel comfortable mentioning it. I didn't really mind, I was like just gonna let him use footage and he didn't have to credit me, but he ended up crediting me at the end of the video. But anyways, uh, I, I made a cameo and he used some of my footage and you can tell it's my footage just some behind the scenes for you, uh, by the fact that if it's wearing this armor and it has this buckler on the back, then it's my footage. Also, I have a no HUD for most of my footage that I gave him, so that's the other way you can tell. If there's no HUD, it's definitely my footage. But also, if the character looks like this, with this set, it's, pro it's my footage. So, you can kind of just tell by the character build whose footage it is. Which I kind of felt bad, because he was uh, talking about some of the hardnesses of some of the enemies, and I was like, oh, I kind of like blasted through a lot of it and tried to make it I don't know, I just played the way I play so some of the like difficulties he would talk about, which were my first time playing, you know, I knew, if I know how to beat an enemy, I'm gonna just deal with it that would happen, but I would do it right is what I'm saying. Anyways as you can tell, there's a boss here that we totally skipped last time, it's Crystal Sage or I just chose not to go to as Crystal Sage is a magic type, what you want to do with magic types is get real close to them so they can't do any range to you and kind of just just pummel into them. Just like, just pummel them. Holy crap, I just absolutely destroyed them on that first round. Now Crystal Sage's hardest thing is that there's going to be multiple ones, which we're finding right here. And when there's multiple ones, the true one is purple. Not to say that's the best one to go for first, it actually isn't necessarily the best one to go for because if you're only going for the purple one, the other ones can hit you and kind of take you out. Anyways, I'm a little OP because I went to Farron Keep first, so being that I'm a bit OP, absolutely murdered Crystal Sage. We get the soul of a Crystal Sage, and now we can talk a little bit more about lore stuff. Which is good, because now that we've gotten to Farron Keep, we actually, uh, I think we can fully talk about this. So, the Crystal Sage. Also, notice that all these souls are starting to look different that we're collecting before I get into the Crystal Sage. I think that's actually important to note. It's really important to note. Anyways, Soul of a Crystal Sage. Used to acquire many souls or transpose to extract its true strength. The twin Crystal Sages once served as spiritual guides to the scholars of the Grand Archives, and one went on to ally with the Undead Legion. So, a couple things we can get out of this. There are two Crystal Sages, as there are twins, and we just killed one of them. Uh, they were scholars of the Grand Archives, however, one of them came over here to where we are, to ally with the Undead Legion. For, and we don't know why exactly, but we know that there's now going to be another one somewhere called the Grand Archives. You can immediately get that out of this. And I think we might have gotten, as well, the Sage's Scroll. Scroll containing sorceries of the Crystal Sages. Uh, so that we found in Farron Keep, so kind of immediately connecting the Farron Keep. Also, I should be starting to give this stuff to our friend from Vinheim, or Becca Vinheim. Otherwise, he's going to peace out on us. So let's go ahead and give some of these scrolls to uh, or Orbeck before it's too late. And level up if I can. Alright, Orbeck, you're going to love me as your pupil. Did he just fall there? He completely just fell into place. Anyways, you're going to love me as a pupil. 
I just uh, so. so I think it's after fighting again that exact same boss that makes um which I think I can just say it, the Abyss Watchers. If you fight the Abyss Watchers, I think that's what makes both... That is definitely what makes Yol of Londor uh, prematurely, like, you can't finish that quest, uh, which sucks if you haven't hollowed out enough by that point. But also, I think it makes Orbeck peace out if you haven't given enough scrolls to him. So let's go ahead and give him a sorcery scroll. Give him the Sage's scroll. Oh, my. This is stupendous. And the undead legion of Farron possesses sorceries quite unknown. Thank you for upholding your end of the bargain. I doubt I ever would have made this discovery alone. Now, let us unravel the thing, so you may put these new sorceries to use. <laughs> Damn right you wouldn't have found it with ma without me. Also, as he says right there, the Undead Legion were the ones who had it, as we found it in Farron Keep, but yet is that Crystal Sage we found who helped them out and gave them that, so, that information. And now we can give him the Golden Scroll that caters back to Ulysseal. Oh my. Well, this is very unusual. It's from Ulysseal, an ancient land of golden sorceries. Not even the Dragon School possesses such a long-lost scroll. What would the Xanthus scholars say with their ridiculous headwear? <laughs> they would simply slaver over this find. <laughs> Interestingly, Xanthus was not connected with Ulysseel and Darsals 1, and here in Darsals 3, they're doing a lot to connect the Xanthus scholars with that big, giant, weird uh, head thing to Ulysseel. So at least as far as I know, that's actually a new thing that they've created, a new canon they've created in Darsals 3. I don't think you actually have to buy any of these sorceries from him. And I'll talk about the sorceries later on. But the main thing is that now that we've given the, these to him, these scrolls, he won't leave. Because that was the main thing for him, is that he just... For him, he just wanted some knowledge from us. He wanted us to drop some knowledge bombs all over him, and we were like, Yo, knowledge bomb here, knowledge bomb there, knowledge bomb left and right! Cool. And what do you know? I can't get another level up. Might as well go for more decks. Oh, well, I'm very easy to read for what I'm going to choose. All right, time to go back to the Crystal Sorcerers, or the Crystal Sage. I'll see you guys in a moment. All right. Here we are at the Road of Sacrifice. We're back again. Road of Sacrifice uh, connected with Aldrich and the Cathedral of the Deep. So, as such, uh, what we know is that this is what should be what's going to lead us to the Cathedral of the Deep. We get some Twinkling Titanite, a couple uh, little Crystal Lizards here. This is a really weird, in my opinion, a really random level design, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just very strange. So there's two areas you can fall off here, either right down there to deal with the Evangelist, and those are carriers over there that you can see, um, or... You can drop down a little bit higher up, which is what we're going to do. Or you can just walk around and not even have dropped on here. The only real reason to drop into this area is to get those crystal lizards. So now we can drop down this way. And you can see just, again, another a little weird wraparound, really. Oh, it looks like I pissed one of them off. Actually, I pissed off the further away one, interestingly. But yeah, so this is where I fell down, was right over here. So you never really even have to fall down either. Uh, where are you at, Carrier? I thought you were coming for me. I guess he changed his mind. So if you look at what's actually in their sack, or, or, or in their cages right there, it looks like a bunch of sacks. So what I think those are, and what they look like to me, are the bodies from the Undead Settlement that are hanging in the sacks. Because the point of these Carriers, and what's implied, is that these... Okay. <laughs> Anyways, what's in, I was just making sure he didn't fall to his death before I followed him. Anyways, what's implied is that these carriers are carrying bodies to the Cathedral of the Deep, so Aldrich can then go ahead and eat them. That is the point. That's why they're going down the Road of Sacrifices, right? Uh, the Road of Sacrifices is for these carriers to bring sacrifices to Aldrich, and that is what is in their cages, those bodies that were hanging from the Undead Settlement. Uh, that is actually something I outlined in my Aldrich video. Another thing immediately that connects Aldrich as well, and the road and the Undead Settlement to the Road of Sacrifice, and what they're doing is this Evangelist, as the Evangelists are inherently connected to 
cathedral of the deep and undead settlement because the whole point of them is that they went and spread the gospel of aldrich to the undead settlement and i think that's why you see all the torture going around i th that's i also figured out that's why you have the fires that they're praying to and all that um it's actually what what it is for those fires is the evangelists feed the followers of the way their way essentially these fire pellets to make it so they don't hurt as much when they burn and then they burn them the followers presumably i mean maybe they burn them to ashes maybe it's something where they burn them so they can feed them to aldrich i'm not entirely sure but it's to make it so it doesn't hurt as much but that's something that the evangelist brought on hey buddy you took so long to uh turn oh whoops whoops right, he has his well uh, I was like, he had his sword out. That was the time I really should have been parrying. Now that he doesn't have his sword. Okay, here we go. Sword. Missed the parry. Two blades should not be going for a parry. Ah. It's funny because I really don't need a parry. I just want it so badly. It just completely takes over all my rationale. Nope. <laughs> you wanted to stick me with the knife, but you couldn't. I should stop going for a berry. I really should. But I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. I actually meant to kick there. Whoops. Man, I'm getting destroyed by this guy. I think this is the... I've said this a couple times with some of these enemies, but this is the most trouble I've ever had with this guy. I was just looking like I almost did no damage to him at all. At all. Might as well kill him the easy way and just R1 spam. <laughs> nah, I'm saying, being that I got a katana... R1 spam. That's all right. The next NPC will go down easy. All right, so we get the Paladin's Ashes. Let's take a look at those. Umbral Ash, or Umbral Ash, of a worn-out Paladin who sought the Cathedral of the Deep. With this, the Shrine Handmaiden will prepare new items. This Paladin paid quite a price for his headstrong justice. Quite a price indeed. There's a bunch of branching paths over here are in this area that don't really lead to anything outside of just some minor items. To the left here we find Titanite Shard. I don't think there's actually anything over here. That's probably what these are saying. Yeah, it's just a nice view. It actually is a really nice view. You can see Lothric over there. You can see the bridge to the Undead Settlement. And actually, uh, that would also mean that this is Farron Keep down here. So, Farron Keep, Lothric, and then over to the right here, uh, yeah, the bridge. So a bunch of areas that we've been to before. And that's everything I can tell. Actually, I wonder what this is right over here. Oh, it looks like just more Farron Keep. Or maybe part of the Road of Sacrifices. Anyways, so yeah, all of that, and that's really all that's over there. And it, we'll go to yet another one. So if we go to the right here, there's yet another hidden area for you to explore. That once again doesn't really have much to it. But you gotta drop down here. I feel like these these two paths are ones that people are very likely to miss. And maybe it's just because I missed them on my first run through before I had to go re-explore everything. Because I missed my first playthrough I missed a uh, a Titanite shard. Or not Titanite shard, an SS Flash shard. But since I missed that, it's like everybody probably misses it. And we get the crest shield. So let's take a look at it. Not the grass crest shield, normal crest shield. One of the enchanted blue shields, the crest shield greatly reduces dark damage. So, actually, a pretty good thing to have as we go into the Cathedral of the Deep, as some of them have some dark damage. Whoo! How do you like that to drop down? Now that's how you make an entrance. And then missing my parry is exactly the opposite of the entrance that I wanted to make. So if you don't take care of the guy who is behind there, he'll start throwing daggers at you while you're dealing with this guy. So make sure. Make sure you take out that first guy first. Ah! Come on. There we- No, what? I guess I was late. I really felt like I had it. There we go. I'm always late in this game. That's definitely what I am the most often when I miss my parries. And I feel like with Dark Souls 1, it was the opposite case. A lot of times I'd be really early. Especially with Lizardmen. Lizardmen were really hard for me to read in Dark Souls 1. And we get the Spider Shield. So, again, here's another connection to Dar uh, Farron Keep. Or, not Farron Keep, to, um... Not good with my words and names today. To the Darker Garden, slash Darker Basin. There's a guy who looks exactly like that, the Darker Garden, with the Spider Shield. 
Exactly like that, an NPC that you fight. Uh, shields of this style are commonly used by Savage Mountain Bandits and offer high resistance to poison. And this one actually has a weapon skill. Equipping this shield in the left hand allows one to perform the skill of the right hand weapon. As opposed to parrying. And you know that ain't my thing, I need my parrying. But there is to show that things do change. Alright, so this area is going to have a bunch of dogs who are going to attack you, and the, I think the best method is just to swing to the left and draw out the dogs to this left area where you're, you're safe from a bunch of these arrows. As you can see, like it's just an area lined with hunters and arrows, so even though there's a bunch of dogs over here to the right, might as well just get safe from the arrows, and dogs can be rough when you get ambushed by them. But that's kind of the point of this area, is you have a bunch of hunters with their arrows and then dogs who are going to ambush you, so... Make sure you're only dealing with one at a time, and that's what that area to the left was for, that I took. And you should be able to get out of here nice and fine, and if you're coming from the top, the hunters won't see you right away as well. So that's gonna help you deal with the arrows. I think there's still one more dog, actually. If you take the main path, the dogs will jump down from above and see you right away. So that is also why you want to take that lower path, as opposed to the main path. Hey, come over here. Come over here so I can... Oh, miss, apparently. That's alright. Just throw a bit of targeting. And that's really all that there is to this area. There's not much to it. Other than, as I said, if you took this main road, you'd have a lot ambushing you at once. You have the arrows flying at you from every direction, you'd have the dogs ambushing you from every direction, so... Take that path. Take that, you path! Wow, I'm glad I have a... Mic protect- a windbreaker now for my mic, uh, because that P would have popped the hell out of this mic. I just literally saw wind blowing against my wind popper thing when I said that. Alright, we have a new enemy here. This guy who uh, is going to commit Sudoku, as I like to say, a suicide bomber. Uh, I assume that it has to do with the Aldrich faithful, like he's an Aldrich worshipper and he's just insane. And this area is pretty important. Try to think carefully. But anyways, this this area right here, this well, is one that we're going to want to come back to. I haven't figured out exactly what the trigger for this well is. But really try to come back to it. And before we move too far on, let's interrupt these worshippers. Sorry guys, I really want to get this Estus Shard. That was pretty important to me. And let's go ahead and go into this building over here. Actually, do I want to do this yet? Yes, actually, because I want to buy a torch. You'll see why about the torch soon. But here we come into the beginning of the Cathedral of the Deep. Now, this uh, this right here is something that you'll see a bunch in the Cathedral of the Deep. See those candles right there? Those candles are pretty much the symbol of the Cathedral of the Deep, and you'll see that a lot. And as far as uh, those guys go, who are statued on here on this, those are Deacons of the Deep. So, all this stuff relating to the De uh, Cathedral of the Deep... And I'm actually going to warp back to Firelink Shrine, but before I do, I want to grab this baby, this Notched Whip. Which actually, now that I think about it, I think the Notched Whip has some lore, some very basic lore. Yeah! Alright, so, the Cleansing Chapel uses whips such as these in order to produce the drops and puddles to wipe clean during its rituals. Makes you wonder what exactly its rituals are. And we're going to go back to Firelink Shrine, so see you guys in a moment. Alright, so, first things first. A, I don't think I can level up, which is fine. That's not why I came back this time. But while we're here, might as well reinforce an Estus Flask. So now we have 10. No reason not to. Doesn't hurt. And, more importantly, the real reason I came back is because I would like to buy... I would like to purchase a torch. Simple, right? Now, I don't care that much, I really don't need it, but it is fun to show off, and some people will feel like it helps a lot, so... Uh, for this specific area that we're going to. So, back to the Cathedral of the Deep! Welcome back. 
Welcome back to the cathedral, the cleansing chapel that will haunt your dreams. So the cleansing chapel where we found that um, item is this specific chapel right here. Also, I don't know how much it really matters, but something I forgot to point out while I'm here is that there's a statue behind of a woman weeping. So not super important, but kind of tells you a little bit about the cathedral of the deep. It's a little bit. And I'm not talking about that kind of deep. Get your get your mind out of the gutter. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? All right, so I think what I'm imagining I have time for is a specific wrap around here. So we're going to find all these various undead rising from the grave. They're not really that important. Don't mind them. Although there is some lore to them. It relates to Aldrich. Surprise, surprise. At least as far as I can tell, this is my belief, my speculation, and therefore 100% fact. Not, not really, though. Just what I kind of think. So... Uh, basically, remember how there's all those bodies coming to Aldrich, right? We're, we're bringing a bunch of bodies to him to feed him. Yum, yum. Well, hey, you know, if it's an undead body, uh, undead keep on coming back. So what are you going to do with the corpses of the bodies that Aldrich eats? Why not make a giant freaking graveyard and put them all around the graveyard, right? And put them, bury them all in the graveyard. I'm trying to find the store of greatsword. Uh, designed for focused thrust attacks. Grace were bestowed upon any elite knight as relic of the rune land of Astora. Cool. That's really all I wanted to do with that. Let's point out that there's an Astora sword here. Actually might be important to lore. Might be. I'm, I'm not 100% certain, but it might be important to relating to uh, Honori of Astora. And just the fact that there's some Astora stuff here. Alright, anyways. Get Fading Soul, and we get the Executioner's Great Sword, which is actually a little... Huh, being that the Executioner's Grey Sword is here too, actually maybe that does make it important with Honori. Something is important that I'm s well, you'll see in a moment. These guys, here we go. These guys right here, these various versions have um, been corrupted by the Deep, essentially, and that's what's coming out of their body. So, you know, not. it seems like Aldrich doesn't breed the greatest of things. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? If we look down here too, over that way, you can see a slimy guy uh, that looks like a full-bodied version of what came out of that guy's stomach. This guy's stomach right here. And I wonder... Okay, let's see if I have a moment to look at the Executioner's... Oh, probably not. Don't want to look at the Executioner's Great Sword because, yeah, one of these guys I knew was going to turn into one of these things. Alright, maybe now I have a moment to look at the Executioner's Great Sword. Come on, come on. Exile Great Sword, Great Sword. Oh no, oh no. Okay, we'll do it later. Or will we? Or will we do it now? There we go. This sword remains a keen memory of its Executioner's duty and absorbs FP from each fallen foe. Uh, main thing to remember, though, is that it's part of the Executioner's set. That is the main thing to remember. Alright, so here we have a Grave Warden. Now, the whole point of these guys is to watch over this graveyard here for the constantly rising undead and put them back down. That is the whole point. And right now he's doing a really crappy job because he's going for me instead of those rising corpses we see everywhere. But, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of what he's supposed to be doing. Bad job, bro. Bad job. But yeah, so if you get the Grave Warden set, that's what that's going to tell you. Now if you notice here, another white birch tree, and what do we, what do you know, our friend is back! You can actually see the tower right over there. That is the tower where the giant is shooting arrows from, and being that he's our friend now, he's going to continue to help us out. So, don't be afraid of those arrows, it's our giant friend back again. Thank goodness for him, I'm glad we friended him. So, cool, getting some more young white birches. I do wonder if that relates to Dusk, considering that the other uh, tree that looked very similar to this, that didn't have arrows around it in Farron Keep, had a lot to do with Dusk. I don't know, though. I really don't know. You want to go down here, though, mainly for this item, which is an undead bone shard. And I don't know. I never really found a need for repair powder in this game, but maybe some people do. 
Dark Souls 2 has seemed a little more important than any of the other Souls games to me. So, and maybe sometimes in Bloodborne, actually, now that I think about it. But mainly Dark Souls 2 is where I was using it. Alright, so, the reason I wanted to go this way first is because up here we're going to get a shortcut that we can unlock, and I don't think there's anything around here. Oh, apparently there is, a Titanite Shard. Good thing I checked. I was going to say, I might as well check anyways, and it's a good thing I did. There right in front of us is the main Cathedral of the Deep. We're probably not going to end up getting to go there this episode and having time, but I do want to point it out. Next episode, we'll definitely be delving deep into the Deep Cathedral of the Deep. Cursed Great Tree, or Cursed Crest Shield, no? Cursed Ward Shield. Great shield given to those who resisted the curse long ago. Far too heavy for an ordinary person, perhaps it signifies the foolishness of resisting the curse. Yet those who bear the weight of this shield would not find its protections against curses wanting. So, it actually does help. What do you know? Alright, so, this is opening up a shortcut. So, that is the whole reason I wanted to go this way first. Because what you can do in the beginning is there's actually a quick way to drop down to this area and then you can climb up this ladder, which I'm sure I'll end up showing off. But I want to verbally say it first. Actually, you know what? Why don't I just do that anyways real quick, just so I can show it. Alright, we will come back to all this stuff. I want to show off the shortcut, mainly because there might actually be an item I'm missing. <laughs> Even though I'm going to have to take the shortcut anyways, but hey, who asked you? Who asked you? Alright, so... Before I ran up this way, right? Well, if I take a right immediately, we can drop down here, and this is going to be a shortcut to, well, how I get to the shortcut I just opened, I should say. Otherwise, you're kind of, uh, SOL. Now, these guys right here are why I wanted the torch. So if you swing a torch at these, they go absolutely crazy and cannot attack you. Actually, I'm going to two-hand it. Take that! Take that and that! Now, I'm not doing much damage to them, but this maggot creature does can it's completely cannot handle the fire, so. That was my goal. Come on, baby. I just want to play with you. Holding R2, though, now that does some major damage if you have time. So, that is how you easily take care of these guys. So, if, you're if they do actually manage to hit you, they're going to cause bleeding. Just by touching you. Essentially, the idea is that they're getting those maggots all over you. I think if you have a torch, it gets rid of the maggots as well. But if you do get those maggots all over you, it's constantly causing bleeding damage. You'll probably bleed out a couple times before it wears off. Here we find a Saint Tree Belvine. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Sacred Chime for casting miracles of the gods. A belvine cut from a small saint tree that has been meticulously tended to. Saint tree belvines are customary in the far north and allow for faster casting than ordinary sacred chimes. Let's see, I have a feeling fire is going to do just fine against this guy as well. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes, it does. You had to have maggots. You had to have maggots. Not that I hurt him for very much. I feel like I was doing more damage when I was hitting the front of his body, which would make sense, since that would be what would be weak against this. Alright, let's go ahead and grab the Titan Shard. I'm not sure if there's anything really big over here. Really, in this underneath part, but I guess we'll see. Point is, if you really want to explore it, use the torch, right? That's the main thing. And there's a bunch of crystal lizards, which I don't need, but... You know, if you need them, if you want some twinkling tights, it's a good place to go to get them. Thank you. Thank you for your twinkling tight night. So it looks like just a bunch of upgrade material, really. I mean, here we have yet another one of the main types of crystal lizards. The big daddies. I guess, like, you know, these give a very specific type. So if you're in need of this type of it, then you'll definitely want to go here. Ah. I stunned him, and I can't utilize it. Remember that time when we first fought him, and he seems so difficult? He's so easy now. Titanite skills. That's the word I was looking for. Alright, if you really look, you'll find a little passage through here that you can go to. 
Now, you can get up there eventually and drop down to this, or you can just do it right now and never have to drop down. And that's what we're going to do. Oh, good. I'm glad we got a hit. So, okay. Notice how my bleed meter came on and it went right away. Because I had the torch, that's what made it so the bleed meter went right away. I'm actually going to let him hit me one more time just because I want to show this to you. Alright, cool. Now look at my body. Notice how I have a bunch of maggots crawling all over it. And they're not going away. So that is what he does by hitting you one time. Let me get a nice close-up there of the maggots all over me. Mmm, mmm, look at those maggots. But, pull out the torch, and they all die. So, torch is really handy in this area. And we get a poison bite ring. Let's see if there's any nice lore to it. Actually, it's gonna say the same thing as the blood bite ring. Crafting of these rings is forbidden, perhaps owing to a fear of malleable stone. Clerics, however, dabbly freely in the art. Clerics, what the hell? Also, did you know that Saint Aldrich used to be a cleric? Hmm, interesting. Interesting lore fact. Thank you very much. And yeah, that's gonna wrap up this episode, uh, mainly because if I went anywhere else, I just wouldn't, I, it would take way too long, so. Oh, man, it was actually kind of cool to see that full statue for a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and level up. And then we'll wrap up, so see you guys momentarily. Alright, first things first, while we're back here, and so I don't forget, burn that on Bone Shard. You want to get that Estus healing you for a lot more. And let's go ahead and talk it to Firekeeper, get a level up. And yeah, so that's going to wrap this up. I know there wasn't too much going on, it was just a lot of exploring. I don't know if I'll be able to get to the boss of the Cathedral of the Deep next episode. I'm, next episode. I'm not sure if I can do it in an hour. But I will do my absolute best. I will try. Oh, baby, I will try. I wonder... I, hmm. I was going to say, I wonder if I can level up again, but I doubt... Oh, I can. Whoa. I'm just so used to level ups taking more, I guess, since on my other game I'm a higher level. All right, cool. What do you know? I'd like to level up from her as much as I can before going to Yol again, because I, I'm not sure, but I think it probably does affect how many souls you need to level up. But anyways, that wraps up this episode. I know it's, uh, actually, I was going to say a little shorter, but probably actually on time to be an hour this time, as opposed to me going over like usual lately. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, sorry if I was a little sporadic in my talking. It's because my throat's bothering me as well as this minor canker sore that I have. So I think it's kind of just throwing me off and making me lose track of what I'm saying. So if that's the case, I'm sorry. I seem to always be apologizing these episodes. I need to stop apologizing. Never mind. Screw you guys. I hate all of you. But seriously, I love you. Don't hate me. Thanks so much for coming. I'll see you guys next time. Later, guys. Peace.